apparently a man of the cloth here in town used me as a part of his uh, uh, of his sermon not long ago. You are correct. And he sent us audio of that. Yes. And this is it. Well, now, do you want to listen? You said you wanted to listen like the first minute or so, the beginning of a sermon, to kind of get just to get a feel oh, of it. Oh, yeah, or? yeah, to get a feel of it. Uh, it's a 23-minute sermon, but he gets to you kind of towards the end, and it's about a three-minute span. Okay. But here's just the first minute, minute and a half of oh, Okay. His name is Kevin Thomas. Okay. It's kind of strange to be in a new spot where you people actually clap when you show up because once you've been in a church a while, they're just like, you're the old guy and just get up there and do your thing and no one gets that excited. So you don't know what's going to happen this morning. So you're all excited. And Anyway, thank you so much for showing up. Most, thank you. Um, Praise the Lord. Most people aren't brave enough. So so that's very, very, very uh, really impressive, icy. Okay. As, as was said. The, the elite are here. I want to uh, start by telling you a story that's going to take you to a bit of a different climate than what we experienced this morning. It was April 22nd of 2008. Stop for a second there. Where were you I on April 22nd sitting... of 2008? Do you know where you were? Um, probably prepping feverishly for a common man program. There you go. Go ahead. Continue on. In BJ's restaurant in the evening in Orlando, Florida, and I am incredibly restless. Stop it Let for a second there. Have you ever been to I BJ's? Would... I have not. They got a great blue plate special. <laughs> They really and truly do. It's very good food. Okay, so now you kind of get a feel. He's going to go into, you know, you know, uh, uh, a, restless a, a, a preacher will do this. They'll kind of go into long, rambling dissertations, sure. and they'll kind of tell tales, and they'll do uh, parables and thisables and syllables and thatables and edibles. And now he gets into the part where he starts talking about the common man program? Yes. Okay. Now I want to kind of wrap this up with um, a little revelation of something that um, your founding and lead pastor David Soren and I hold in common. And I hope it doesn't make you feel less about him. Um, you can feel less about me, but you're probably not going to see me for a while, so you'll be okay with that. Uh, it has to do with a certain radio program that we like to listen to. And, and um, I wish I could say that David and I like to listen to classical music, radio, or deep conversations about the compelling news issues of our day, but but David and I have this common like of this certain sports talk radio station. Now, to explain this program, I have to uh, set up a contrast between what radio program comes before it and, and, and then during the program itself. Okay, so, so on this certain local sports talk station, from 9 to noon, there's one program, and then from noon to 3, there's another program. Okay? Now, from, from 9 to noon... Uh, th- there's there's an unmistakable slogan that comes on. As this 9 to noon program comes on, the, the announcer's voice comes over the music and says, it's not a radio show, it's a love covenant. And, and basically for three hours, you get Vikings and Timberwolves and, and uh, Wild fans and Twins fans calling in crying in each other's shoulders, trying to boost each other up, trying, trying just to survive being a sports fan in the Twin Cities. Now, now that's, a, that's a good show, program, but the one that Dave and I really like is the one that comes after it. Because 9 to noon calls itself the Love Covenant. Noon to 3 calls itself the Tough Love Covenant. And, and, and this, this host happens to just make a mockery of all the different decisions that are made by local sports teams and is really willing to call people out and say, this is ludicrous the way we're doing this and just continually tells us we can do better. It's not a love covenant, it's a tough love covenant. And I think as David and I talk, we recognize we're trying to create churches that have the tough love covenant. You know, you can go to a lot of places in our society that will just say, you're really good the way you are, you're perfect, don't change a thing, you're just a nice person, so feel good about yourself. But I know that David and I both have this passion in our soul to see people change. That living a superficial life in the suburbs is absolutely unacceptable. That we have to be people that pursue significance. And that means we're going to pursue significance in God with each other for the cause of our world. And sometimes it's not easy. And sometimes you might show up on a Sunday morning going, I wish he wouldn't be quite so tough on us. But it's the tough love covenant. And it means if we're going to aspire to live lives of true significance, we have to be willing to step out from what's normal and go after what God has for us, which is infinitely higher than we can ever imagine. Now, this is the part where they take the collection baskets and pass them around, and you throw in your well-earned, your hard-earned money so that the church can survive. 
It's the tough love covenant. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. That's why we enjoy the tough love covenant as well. Next now, to Kevin Thomas at the Renovation Church. That's a terrific church, Blaine. too. That was a, and that's a heck of a message. Because you do have to do tough love covenant kind of stuff. 